All right. So this one, I have a couple things. Uh, Chris Brown's former housekeeper demands one million over vicious dog attack. Singer accused of blowing off the lawsuit. Now, this has been something that's been kind of going on for a while, but this is uh, the update. Former uh, Chris Brown's former employee is accusing the singer of blowing off her lawsuit over an alleged vicious dog attack that went down at his home. According to court documents obtained by Radar, Patricia uh, Avila, who cleaned the pop star's Tarzana mansion with her sister, believes she's entitled to a one million default judgment. Avea says that uh, says she properly served Brown with notice of the lawsuit, but he hasn't bothered to show up in court. Uh, the breakdown of her million dollar request for the emotional distress she suffered is uh, one million for the emotional distress she suffered, a uh, thousand for medical expenses, twenty four thousand in loss of earnings, and an unknown unknown amount for future loss of earnings. Um, All right. Her- so so real quick, let's go through two things that you just mentioned. Number one. Sure. As far as what happened, so the housekeeper filed a lawsuit, and I think there were two dogs, if I remember correctly. There were two dogs that were in the house, and she said they were usually kept apart, and she didn't really have a problem. And I think she was making like 600 bucks a day. So, you know, I'm sure this was a great job for her, but she goes at some point, one of the dogs got out and started attacking her. And so, um, I don't know if you're at the part, but, you know, maybe just kind of explain if you remember, you know, where did the dog bite her? Are we yeah, talking so, about like a little nip on the arm or? Yeah, no, let me pull that up. Cause that, that, that actually, that was, that, I got that kind of stuff from a, another place. Oops. Again, sorry. We're trying a whole new. Yeah. And guys, I mean, what you're going to see, cause we we're we're going to bounce between two different articles. Cause one was from a couple of months ago, which I thought yeah. gave a little bit more description of what had happened versus kind of today, what the lawsuit's about, what happened. And we'll, we'll give you an update there. But so then this one was in Fox news. This was, yeah, this was from a Fox news article. Um, and the attorney for, for the, for her, for the client said that her, um, complaint that the housekeeper was putting garbage in a trash when a very large brown dog comes out of nowhere and visually brutally mauls, bites, and attacks. Um, the dog begins savagely biting her face, her arms, and other parts of her person and body, literally tearing out and ripping off large chunks of her skin from her face and her arms. Oof. So... Yikes. Yeah, so something, something you know, I thought was interesting because you had said she was seeking a million dollars in emotional <clears throat> distress damages that could come from many things. She has remained anonymous through this process. So, of course, you know, to the extent that we can look up well, maybe see now. pictures. Until now. Well, yeah, I don't, I wasn't able to see any pictures, but to the extent of the damage, oh, right, anything maybe. when it comes to your face, anyone's usually going to be pretty sensitive about that so a part of the emotional distress might be you know it sounds like she had to take work off for many many weeks um but then also i don't know what kind of scarring she's left with i i read that she had to go through multiple surgeries which for me i guess didn't quite add up and my only kind of skepticism is if she's only seeking a million i'm sorry a thousand dollars in medical bills if she had multiple surgeries wouldn't it be more than that but but i don't know I, i haven't actually seen that uh, but look, if a dog attacked me and ripped into my face, I'd be well, pretty no, upset it, about it too. And in the original story, it said uh, the occupants of included the defendant Brown, his security guards, or security team members. As she lay there bleeding profusely, barely able to see as blood was covering her eyes, face, and body, she observes defendant Brown approach her, standing over her as he is speaking on his cell phone, the, the complaint uh, described. And then he, Chris Brown reportedly ordered his security team to dispose of the dog, and it was euthanized by Humboldt County authorities per the housekeeper's statement. So he was apparently trying to get rid of the evidence of it. Now, this story kind of hits home for me because, you know, before I, I kind of, you know, went into, you know, music full, full, full time, you know, I used to work as a uh, pool tech and, you know, would clean and service swimming pools and stuff. And there'd be a lot of times where there was just crazy vicious dogs that were barely just kept in by a fence that would be, you know, trying to break through fences um there were times where i had been actually bit on the leg by uh by a dog and and just like you know there's been times where i literally have been fearful because you know some of these some dogs can be very aggressive and they don't want people in their backyards they don't want people in their house they they're they're very protective especially if they're security dogs and i think it's definitely the homeowner's responsibility to make sure that their animals are stowed 
um, to the level of whatever employee, guest, stranger, whoever is in the, whoever is in um, the house. Because I got to tell you, if some of the dogs that I had been, you know, working alongside had actually gotten through and really done some damage to me. And if one of them was Chris Brown, Chris Brown should have known better. I'm coming after him. Like there's but no what way. About, like, I dog, think you had told me one time you had a, you had a dog bite on your hand and it, it felt, it burned oh my God. Oh, right. for so, so long. So that was a, that was a more of a friendly situation as that was my, my friend's animal whom I loved and I didn't want to, uh, you know, it, it was an accident, but yeah, no, I had been, uh, I, I was feeding a dog a treat and it got, I, my hand got bit. Uh, it, I've never felt a burning in my life as was in, you know, from this dog bite that happened. And then even months later, after it healed, was healing up, I found uh, there was like a little speck in there and I dug out and there was a piece of the cookie that he had. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Like that was just <clears throat> sitting in there. So, I mean, obviously I'm fine and stuff. I also have friends that have been, you know, bit by dogs. Um, but the point is, that's just carelessness to me. And that could be easily avoided. Well, that- and let's talk about that, though. Because in, in the article, it was saying that the dog broke through and got through the door. Okay, so it wasn't just let out. It was just kind of... But that can mean so in any- that carelessness analysis, what I'm going to say is, I actually have a case right now. And I don't take a lot of these cases. I do... Obviously, mostly entertainment law, but every once in a while, a client will bring me something that's, you know, just needs to be handled. So, and it was a case in regards to a dog bite, but it was a dog bite of another dog that killed the dog. Mm -hmm. And the dog was a pit bull. You know, unfortunately, I don't want to, you know, stereotype or anything, but it was a pit bull. It was more aggressive, specific to this dog, and it burst through the gate. And so a lot of the analysis comes down to, does the owner have a responsibility to ensure that the dog is constrained? And the answer for our state is yes. You have you have an absolute duty, and that's how you get to that negligence factor because the owner's nowhere to be found. Now, in this complaint, we're hearing that Chris Brown was allegedly in the house. He's on his phone, and you know, obviously, they're not really describing a sympathetic reaction upon coming coming upon someone that had just been attacked by your dog. But right. you know, we'll hear his side. I would if be. He I responds. would be. I would be mortified and, and, and I would feel, I can't even imagine how guilty and whatever. And I would just want to do, if I was Chris Brown, I would just want to do whatever I could to make it right because I can't even imagine like, oh my gosh, but it's absolutely their fault. They, he was aware of, you know, the, the aggressiveness of the dog. If it's like, if it's breaking through a door, like that's not the first time that he's gotten through a barrier has whatever. And if you can hear it, it's going on, then secure the dog. I don't, I don't know. That's your responsibility. You have me here to clean your house, to take care of your things. I need to move about freely. I need to feel safe when I do it. Um, so yeah, I mean, seems pretty cut and dry to me, but you know, we'll see. Well, and so what's going to happen from here, <clears throat> because we had just said in the, in the beginning of the segment that, we have a default judgment situation. That means that once someone files a complaint, if the other side doesn't respond and give an answer or a motion to dismiss or any kind of filing to actually say, hey, I'm going to defend myself, mm-hmm. then you get what's called default judgment. Now, there's usually a little period of time once you file for default judgment where the other side can still wake up and get into the case and they'll be able to answer. But if you get default judgment, then you go in front of the judge and you say, hey, me as the person complaining, this is all the evidence that I have. And so, you know, in cases that I've had default judgment, I'll just say, this is what the contract said. For example, this is what we're claiming. We want $500,000. And the judge will say, okay, and stamp it. So it's not good to not respond, especially if someone has a claim for a million dollars plus, which she may or may not be entitled to. And if he doesn't do anything or one of his attorneys doesn't responds then she'll get that default judgment for how much money that's up to the judge right it's interesting it's interesting um but it is it is pretty suspicious that he just went and just euthanized the dog i don't even i don't even know if like you know there's a comment uh in there about would that be considered you know tampering with evidence and 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 that's what the um that's what the, the the complaint is is kind of you know suggesting as well so i don't know I don't know, but I, I, I do, I do know that it's terrible. I can't even imagine like the fear. And then there's a fear coming of like afterwards, like being afraid of dogs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh my God, are you going to be, you know, I, my, my best friend was, 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 has been bitten by many dogs. He had a lot of different dogs. He wasn't good with dogs. <laughs> um, but he, it took him many years to, to get over that fear of just even being around a dog. And I mean, that's- yeah, no. And that goes into the emotional terrible. distress analysis. 
for sure. You know, but I think the last point that I'll, I'll make is just about you had said um, disposing of the evidence, right? Yeah. Um, that plays into how we value animals and, you know, different situations, different outcomes. But specifically when it comes to um, dogs under most states law, their property, right? They're not recognized the way that people are, right? So like in, for example, the case that I was talking about where we have a dog attack that then resulted in the loss of another dog, it was what's the valuation of the dog? And so, you know, what is that, 50 bucks? You, <laughs> which is not the valuation. These dogs are our family oh half of the time. No, I mean, we, we, we literally have this conversation all the time. So, I mean, especially, you know, when our when our dog um, already uh, may he rest in peace, uh, you know, before when he was younger, he was also attacked by a dog, and we went through that whole, um, you know, just the dog got loose. Another one of these instances where the dog got loose, wasn't on a leash, and you know, almost you know really uh, took out my dog, <laughs> and you know, there was a situation there. So. I don't know. I, just to dog owners, just keep keep them. You know the temperament of your animal, and and you know it's not the dog's fault that the dog was just trying to protect the house. Um, but at the same point, it's your responsibility to um, to secure that Restrain. dog. Restrain. Yeah. Yeah. Yep.